Welcome to Now is the Time for Miracles. We're seeking through this medium to bring God's plan and purpose for your life. Now is the Time for Miracles is presented by Channel of Love Ministries, a frontline, cutting edge ministry endeavoring to obey the biblical mandate to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Now is the Time for Miracles host and teacher is the evangelist Joan Pierce, who along with her husband Marty is committed to the proclamation of God's Word, touching lives, saving souls, healing hearts. Now is the Time for Miracles. Be blessed, be inspired, and be changed. Here's your host and teacher, Dr. Joan Pierce. Turn with me to Matthew, I mean John, John 14. John 14, in verse 21. John 14, 21. And it says, this is Jesus speaking. He who has my commandments and keeps them. Okay, I'm at John 14, 21. He who has my commandments and keeps them. It is he who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Now listen to this very carefully. It says, he who loves me, I will love, and my Father in heaven, my Father in heaven will love them. And when you have that kind of love, in your heart, perfect love casts out fear. Perfect love casts out doubt. Perfect love changes things. We're in a situation right now, Marty and I, where we need to believe God for an awesome miracle to come in less than 30 days. We need an awesome miracle in less than 30 days, and we cannot get worried or let strife come in or worry come in or anything come in. We have to just believe. You know, when, when you have a wall in front of you, you just believe. Because you know that you know that you know that God's commandments are. He said, he said I'm going to read this again. He says, and he, and he who has my commandments and keeps them. Are you hearing me? What is God's commandments? He says, go into all the world and preach this gospel. He says, go lay hands on the sick. He said, feed the poor. Take care of the naked. Take care of widows and orphans. He says, cast out devils. He's telling us all kinds of things. If you read the gospel, he tells us to love one another, to love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your might, with all your strength, and your neighbor as yourself. Who's your neighbor? It's that one that's just a dirty rat that's down the street that you just really don't want to talk to because he's causing problems all the time or she's causing problems all the time. And you know what? It's real easy to love the ones that are nice, but God is saying to you to love the ones that are nasty. Love the ones that turn on you. Take the knife and crack them inside. Say things so that you love them. Pray for your enemies and pray for those that despitefully use you because you know it's not them. It's the devil working through them. Because once that terrible person gets saved, there'll be a, a new creature in Christ Jesus. How many of you were terrible people? Hey, I was. I was a terrible person. My neighbor witnessed to me, and I threw Bibles at her, cussed at her, and blew smoke in her face. No, I'm telling you the truth. She came over. I cussed her out. I could swear good, too. I was a good swearer. I mean, I knew all kinds of swear words, okay? And I just laid them on her. I'd blow smoke in her face. I used to smoke two packs of cigarettes a day. And I, and I wouldn't even inhale it. I would just, she'd be telling me about Jesus, and I'd think, I want her to get out of here. I don't want to hear about this Jesus. And I would just puff and, and I wouldn't even inhale it. That way it just get a cloud around her until her eyes were watering, and she'd just keep saying, Jesus loves you. And I was like, yeah, right, lady. And you know what? She never gave up on me for nine months. She'd fast and she'd pray. And one day, one day she brought me to a service and I, I got the name. I had an in, in, in a visitation from God. And you know what? She said of all her life, she said there was nobody that she ever had to witness to that was as hard a case as me. She said, I wanted to give up on you. I told God, don't, I don't want to go witness. She's nasty. She's rude. She's crude. And you know what? I am so thankful that she didn't give up because God didn't say this was easy. He said the harvest is plentiful 
en dan even zo vier. Dat de man niet te maken is, zo mooi. Who can it go? I love them. Some of you were those unlovely people. Because somebody told you. And he says, if you keep my commandments and love these people, then I will love you, and my Father will love you, and I will manifest myself to you. Now, that, now listen to that word, it's really important. That means I will come and I will become alive in you. I will manifest. That means everything in me will be manifested to you. And that means I'm going to reveal my will, my will, my plan. And he might even just come visit us. I mean, he says he's going to manifest himself to us. So he's saying, watch my hand move on you. Because in the last days, God, God's people have got to be so full of God that the world says there's something different. They're not like other people. They don't act like other people. They don't respond like other people. They don't hurt or, or they turn the other cheek when you say that. But I want to talk to you about a glimpse of heaven. Several years ago, over 25, 30 years ago, there was a mighty man of God that went around doing crusades all throughout the United States, and different parts of the country. He had such an anointing on his life that angels showed up in every one of his services. Do you know we have angels in our services anyway? We've had many services where angels have showed up and we've had visitations of angels. <laughs> 